Hello, folks. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Fred the Tennessean and Jerry Martin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and welcome to this important ceremony. We meet today to honor the winners of this year's National Medal of Science and the National Medal of Technology. But they aren't the only winners. Our country wins as a result of the outstanding contributions to knowledge represented by these award winners. The National Medal of Technology is the highest award the President of the United States can give for extraordinary achievement in the commercialization of technology or in the development of human resources that foster it. The National Medal of Science provides recognition for individuals who make outstanding contributions in the physical, biological, mathematical, and engineering sciences. This year's winners are extraordinary. Whether it's Dr. Robb in advanced manufacturing technology or Dr. Leapman in human resource development, or the five winners in product and process innovation, or the two in technology transfer, or the eight distinguished science medal winners in fields like engineering, chemistry, math, and biology, these are all medals richly deserved. And we are celebrating more than the scientific achievement. We are saluting lifetimes of dedicated work expanding the frontiers of human knowledge. Our country faces tough competition just now. Our ability to stay competitive in the 21st century will determine how many and what kinds of jobs we have and the quality of life for all our citizens. The lives of the winners of both medals have been spent on projects that will help keep us competitive. So while we salute these winners, let's remember there's one more big winner as well, our country. To tell you more about why, it's my pleasure to introduce the President of the United States, Bill Clinton. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. When we schedule these wonderful things on the South Lawn, we normally do it because it's so warm at this time of year. I would give another medal to someone right now who could raise the temperature just six degrees. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, Secretary Aspen, Secretary Brown, Under Secretary Kunin, Dr. Gibbons, Under Secretary of Commerce for Technology, Mary Good, and Acting Director of the National Science Foundation, Dr. Fred Bernthal, the Director Designated of the Science Foundation, Dr. Neil Lane, Distinguished Medal recipients and members of the National Medal of Technology Nominating Evaluation Committee, members of the President's Committee on National Medal of Science, and the 1993 Presidential Faculty Fellows, the 30 outstanding young scientists and engineers who are joining us here for this ceremony, and I congratulate all of you. Where are you? They're in the back over there. and to the Foundation for the National Medals of Science and Technology and other guests, although I hope I've named everyone by now. <laughs> it's a great privilege for us to have you here today. I haven't been exposed to this much knowledge of science and technology since I named Al Gore to be my running mate last year. <laughs> I'm glad to salute all of you who are winners, whose discoveries advance our standard of living and the quality of our lives our health, our understanding of the world, and our own place in it. I know that the achievements we honor today will improve our ability to communicate with one another, to increase the productivity of our people, and to secure our place in the global economy, and hopefully to help to preserve in common our planet. It's especially important to me that we find ways to preserve what is important to us and to succeed in this global economy because I know we cannot win the fight that we are in by continuing to do what we have done, which is to have our working people work harder and harder for less and less. Yesterday, we celebrated two achievements of science and technology uh, and a great gamble besides by announcing, as some of you noticed, uh, an unprecedented joint research venture with the big three automakers, our national defense labs, and our other federal scientific research facilities to try to triple the fuel efficiency of cars by the end of the decade. And then we announced that we were removing export controls on 70 percent of America's computers, so both the regular computers and supercomputers, in ways that we believe will add uh, billions of dollars, indeed tens of billions of dollars, to our exports. 
Today we honor people who are the dreamers, the pioneers, the risk takers, who remind us that the things we celebrated yesterday were once just a gleam in the mind's eye of a brilliant scientist or an engineer. You too will have that pleasure someday, but today we honor people who are the new scouts in our timeless urge for adventure. Forty years ago, J. Robert Oppenheimer said in a lecture, both the man of science and the man of art live always at the edge of mystery surrounded by it. Both, as the measure of their creation, have always had to do with the harmonization of what is new with what is familiar, with the balance between novelty and synthesis, with the struggle to make partial order in total chaos. That sounds like my job. <laughs> This cannot be an easy life, he said. Well, it may not be an easy life, but clearly it is a life worth living, and today a life worth honoring. I thank all of you so much for helping this country and this administration move toward the 21st century. Daniel Borson wrote in his book, The Discoverers, all the world is still in America. The most promising words ever written on the map of human knowledge are terra incognita, unknown territory. Your discoveries of unknown territory are for the rest of us most promising, and your country salutes you for them. Thank you very much. The first medal of technology, Walter L. Robb, for his development and commercialization of new medical imaging technologies and related advanced manufacturing initiatives. <laughs> Amos E. Joel, Jr., for his introduction of technological advances in telecommunications, particularly in switching, that transformed the telecommunications industry. William H. Joyce for his creating and commercializing the Unipol process that revolutionized the production of plastics. George Levitt and Marinus Loos, two together here, for their independent contributions to the discovery and commercialization of environmentally friendly herbicides. Kenneth H. Olson for his contributions to computer technology and entrepreneurship in American business. Hans W. Liepman for his contributions to the field of fluid mechanics and the education of the world's leaders in aeronautical engineering. George Kosmetsky for his establishment and development of over 100 technology-based companies that employ tens of thousands and export over $1 billion. <laughs> William D. Manley for the development and process of advanced high temperature and high performance materials and for transferring that technology to a variety of American industries. Mr. President, uh, I present the winners of the National Medal of Science. Daniel Nathans, for his seminal research in molecular genetics that formed a foundation for contemporary biotechnology. <laughs> Salome G. Welsh, for her lifetime of work on developmental genetics.
Donald J. Cram for pioneering research on the chemical foundations of molecular recognition, his shaping of scientific thought and development, and guidance to generations of students. Norman Hackerman for his seminal contributions in the field of electrochemistry and for his devoted service to the nation and science. Alfred Y. Cho for his pioneering work in the development of molecular beam epitaxy which revolutionized thin film growth and for the study of new quantum phenomena. Martin D. Kruskal for his influence as a leader in nonlinear science for more than two decades as the principal architect of the theory of soliton solutions of nonlinear equations of evolution. Val L. Fitch for his pioneering experiments at the frontiers of physics and for his leadership on national science policy. Vera C. Rubin, for her pioneering research programs in observational cosmology, which demonstrated that much of the matter in the universe is dark. How are we going to do this? You were one time the vice president on the other. Okay. All right. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> well, for me to stand up here right. with them is false after that, I'm next. <laughs> Thank you, we're adjourned. Thank you.